Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Hey everyone, checking in on the broader market. So SPY clearly breaking to a higher high, and this is the high of the COVID bounce. And we are looking at a gap fill of 332.58, and then the all-time high, which is currently about 3.5% from where we stand. Anything above? 319.64 is a daily higher low. When you have two support levels this close to each other, I always default to the lower level because I wouldn't want to get stopped out at 319.50 just to see 319.25 hold. So I would be looking at 319.25 as our daily higher low to maintain the daily uptrend from here. And the bulls have full control. IWM, breaking resistance of 149.45. The high of the recent move is 150.20. Then it's the high of the COVID bounce, 153.39. So a little bit behind, not at the high of the COVID bounce at the moment. And that is because of the lesser tech sector holdings more financial sector and healthcare, which are still holding on well, but not having that tech sector strength is why we are weaker than SPY. QQQ, blue sky breakout bulls. So after profit taking Friday with earnings reactions from Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Google, we saw profit taking and then the bulls showed back up today to convincingly break. Well, I guess I won't say convincingly. I need more than that. So 269.79 was the all-time high, and we only broke that by 36 cents. So that is not convincing, but it is an all-time high, and we have plenty of space with anything above 256.55 as a daily higher low, as we are looking to confirm the weekly bull flag. Look at Apple. Weekly bull flag confirmed on the earnings reaction. Then we look at Google. Healthy weekly consolidation, but no higher low set yet. Then we look at Amazon, trying for a weekly bull flag, but sideways. Then we look at Facebook, new all-time high after healthy weekly consolidation. And we'll wrap it up with Netflix, watching for a weekly lower high. So the bottom line is the weekly charts on all these names are still healthy. And it's just a question of, can the QQQ bulls convincingly do what Apple did? That's a convincingly weekly bull flag confirming to new all-time highs. The question is, what kind of catalyst can we see in the tech sector from here? We don't necessarily need a catalyst. We would need a catalyst to see a short-term move, you know, this week to get that follow-through. But we can just keep this daily uptrend on all our major names, and that would do it. So, as long as QQQ bulls are holding 251.32, they are in control of the longer-term uptrend. Healthcare sector... Key resistance of 107.30. We got an all-time high today. I thought we did. What am I missing? Could have sworn XLV hit an all-time high today. I might have been looking at some incorrect fidelity numbers telling me what the 52-week high was. Either way, it is a daily confirmed downtrend with zero bear follow-through, which means zoom out and it's a potential weekly bull flag. So there's limited resistance up here. We are looking at 107.31 and 107.53 as the two levels to break, another percent to the upside would do it. And when we top out on this current move, bulls will need to form a higher low compared to 104.15 on the daily chart to try and shift this momentum. XLF. So XLF had the double bottom Thursday and Friday, and Friday that was the day saver for the S&P 500 in my opinion. And now it is all about this resistance zone. And again, it's not a clear price level, We've topped out at 24, 49, 48, 47, 43, and 40. It is a resistance zone. And if we do not break that resistance zone, bulls don't prove anything to me for XLF. So if we were to set a daily lower high here and drop down and break 2371, that would be a very convincing weekly lower high being set for me at that point. I would be viewing it as a high, low, lower high, and we would then be looking for the bulls to try and hold 2252 if we break 2371. If 2371 holds this week, then bulls are holding on just fine. If I'm a bear, I really want to see 2371 break on the financial sector. 
Biotech sector, very notable bounce, but we are just looking for a daily lower high. Resistance of 115.42 is approaching and the hourly time frame is getting extended. We don't have a clear hourly trend change at this point, just more of a V-shaped recovery. So if we were to keep heading on the hourly without consolidation to test 115.42, that's the kind of top fish play that I like. Bigger picture, daily lower high, most likely scenario. And I want to see the shorter term time frames as extended as possible when heading to that resistance level, if I'm going to be looking to make a play off of it. And we know that once we do start consolidating, there is plenty of space for an hourly higher low to form. SMH was at an all time high. So bulls maintaining full control there. Did NVDA get it? I believe we did. So NVDA all time high, daily equilibrium, double bottom in 391s, breaking bullish. AMD, no all time high, but still right up there. So SMH, very strong. Is it a potential four hour rising wedge? I'm sure you could draw it so that that is a possible scenario to be watching for. I would have to put the anchor points closer. Nah, too choppy. You could do it on the daily, but we have plenty of space. I would consider anything above 161.33 as a daily high or low, and it's in blue sky breakout. The VIX has me cautious. So we are still seeing weakness here in the VIX, absolutely. Dropping down. We broke 23.50 and 23.60, this little double low. But we are still in this channel. Look back historically. What happens when we have long drawn out channels? Well, number one, we can stay in that long drawn out channel for a very long time. We can absolutely make note of that. But we break them fast and hard. We don't see slow trend changes on the daily time frame for the VIX. When we are in a contained channel, we slowly fade and then it's just bulls get punched in the face real quick and it's a fast, hard move up. And you can go back and look historically what happens on these slow fades. Here's one from 2019. Slow fade, bulls unable to change the daily trend and then just a couple days of a fast, hard bull move up. Here's another one, just a slow fade rocket. So... This slow fade could last another three weeks for all we know. Timing is very difficult, but we know how these tightening ranges, not tightening ranges, but how these contained channels generally break. And again, you're not going to find a better example than the one that just took place into June with this little spike here. So that is what we are watching for. And again, we get lulled into a sense of complacency where the bulls have complete control and every day we're just saying that and the same thing. And then all of a sudden you have a 4% drop day. So we always have to protect against that. Again, I'm not every day sitting at my computer and saying, is this the day that we're going to spike on the VIX? Is this the day we're about to drop 4%? Because I would be wasting a ton of days if I were doing that. But on every trade game plan that I take, I am aware that that is a possibility. So I protect against that so I don't get blindsided with my pants down because we've seen it enough to know that's generally how we get a shakeup with a fast, hard drop. And if we look at SPY, when's the last time that happened? Slow fade, bulls in complete control, getting a little euphoric, fast, hard drop of nearly 10% in just a few days. So just be aware that that is generally how those VIX ranges break. Gold, bulls keeping control. This is a four hour rising wedge to be aware of. Again, there's no red flags. It's just a caution. It tells you be cautious because we are looking for this range to break sometime in the next 24 hours. And it'll either be a clear bull break up to 2000 or a clear bear break, which tells us to zoom out and look for more significant daily consolidation to take place. And we certainly have seen very limited daily consolidation in the last two weeks. So four hour rising wedge on gold on watch. I like silver's 12 hour time frame better because it's an equilibrium and tightening range. High, low, lower high, higher low, double top in the 2490s, the upper 2490s. And now we're looking for a 12 hour higher low compared to 2291. So four hour rising wedge on gold on watch and silver 12 hour tightening equilibrium on watch as well. Both scenarios, the bulls are keeping control right now the burden of proof is on the bears. Miners drop hard first thing this morning and then a great bottom fish off of that level. So all out dump, significant bounce, 
double bottom, significant bounce. Daily chart, must hold 4096. I'll be watching for the potential of a top fish play. We're clearly seeing the miners weaker than the S&P 500 and gold, which are both right up at their highs, and the miners are still multiple percent from their highs. So I will not rule out the potential of looking for a top fish if I can make a bearish entry. We're still 4% away. If I can make a bearish entry with very little risk, top fishing 44, 46 resistance on a pattern that looks like we're about to see some gold daily consolidation, I am open to that possible trade, but only if it is pretty much the ideal scenario of what I'm looking for with very low risk. And we're not there right now. Oil. So daily bounce, getting follow through, anything under 41.93 is a daily lower high. Keeping in mind bigger picture, anything above 35 is a weekly higher low. So bulls have plenty of space to maintain the weekly uptrend. We did get a clear bear break from its daily rising wedge, but no bear follow through. It was one day of bear action on that break. And now we've been holding on for the last two days. So if the bears are going to prove anything to us, we must top out and see a lower high and lower low breaking 38.72. But again, the size of the bounce at this point, pretty much best case for the bulls after what we saw on last Thursday. Congrats, natural gas bulls. Huge breakout candle. And if you've been watching these videos, you know we have been piece by piece noting the little clues of the longer term momentum shift. It started with me on a daily basis saying, I don't care what's going on for the bulls as long as the weekly 12 period exponential is resistance because it's been rejecting the price for six plus months. We then closed over it. Okay, now I'm paying attention. Now we're looking for that weekly higher low. We set the weekly higher low. We were then looking for a daily higher low, change the daily trend, break weekly resistance, another little daily higher low, and bulls are off to the races. This is a long-term momentum shift. If you're seeing this daily candle and saying, I want a natural gas position, you are late to the party. There were plenty of chances to enter in the last two weeks. And in my opinion, if you did not enter, you do not want to be chasing right now. You can just chalk it up as a lesson. And I was sitting there wanting a natural gas position, but... My New Year's resolution for 2020 made a video all about it, and it was included not trading natural gas this year. So I just have to watch that go, but logging it in my memory banks because it was successful recognition of a longer term momentum shift. And though I'm not making any money on it this time around, there'll be another time that I utilize that memory to profit on a stock or commodity or something else in my trading career. So I can look at that and feel FOMO, or I can look at that and say, all right, we were on point, get them next time. So that's where we stand. I'm starting to keep an eye out for a Kodak daily higher low after all this sell-off. I love oversold bounces and I am starting to get interested. And we're going to be looking for this bounce sometime in the next day or two. Have a good rest of your day. Do good things. I'll see you tomorrow. We're going to let all the bird seed grow into more bird seed. Got some melons. Big old melons going. And then we got our weird melons. On the inside of that it has this little red jelly. It's almost like little hearts. Very interesting fruit. The fig trees are sizing up nicely. They were the last thing to show green in the spring, but certainly making up for lost time. It's also good to stagger your varieties. So this raspberry has been putting on fruit for probably three weeks at this point, pretty consistently. And this one's not been doing anything. This one's on its way out. And these are all flowers that are going to be raspberries in a week or so. So nice to have varieties that stagger your production. Winter squash is sizing up. My favorite's the delicata. Which are these little guys.